So today we'll start with the uh, verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 29. So we'll talk about only the first part of the verse where Allah is referring to that everything on earth is created for us. And in case you have doubt, really, everything on earth is created for us. There is the emphasis, Jamia, yes, everything on earth is created for us. Now, my uh, question might come, really, uh, is this created for us? You know, what good does this thing do for us? You know? And then you have nasty creatures like cockroaches. What good does this do to us? You know, but Allah is telling us everything on planet earth is created for us. And then you have all these destructive processes like earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, forest fires, volcanic explosions like this one. You know, this is the Tonga volcanic explosion that happened last year, the largest volcanic explosion ever recorded on camera. Uh, and this kind of events wipes out a whole town. You know, many, many people die, thousands of people lose their lives. What good? there is for these kind of natural processes but Allah is telling us that everything on earth is created for us so there must be something amazing here uh, you can see that this is a CCTV footage everything is destroyed so let's pick an ex example cockroach what good is there for us I found this professor professor Srini he is a world-renowned cockroach expert imagine his CV what it looks like <laughs> world-renowned cockroach expert uh, his, he and his team spent 22 years studying cockroach. It's such an incredible creature that a team of academic can spend 22 years studying cockroach and they found something incredible. These need sugar like the rest of us, but they'll also go for things like cardboard, book bindings, human toenails, rotting meat, blood, excrement, and even each other. That's right. These roaches have been known to eat other dead or crippled cockroaches so cockroaches are essentially the nature's cleaner they clean everything including even their own so if you give cockroach this it will convert it to this especially the <coughs> nitrogen in the air do you know why the sky color is blue anyone know it's because of the nitrogen in the air you know that gives the sky the distinct blue color so what is happening here is that you know cockroach should consume all the garbages in the nature and then it will do what it does and that will release nitrogen into the atmosphere and we know that you know we have studied in school 78 percent in the air is nitrogen and there is oxygen and carbon dioxide so that nitrogen goes back to the atmosphere it comes down through rain to the soil and then the plants will consume that nitrogen and nitrogen is essential part of every cell in our body and even in any plant every cell has nitrogen our dna has nitrogen in it so we are essentially built of nitrogen and then when this plants and we die, we go back to becoming garbage and then cockroach will recycle it. You know, in case if you feel proud for yourself, you should think that our body is made up of cockroach poop. <laughs> so that should give us, bring some humility. So cockroach is there to facilitate creation of vast forest and the, the beautiful nature that we see today. You know, the reason why you go to Hainol forest and you see the floor is pretty clean. Is because of creatures like cockroaches they have been there nature's cleaner cleaning the earth for hundreds of millions of years in fact cockroaches have been there since the time of the dinosaurs so for 200 to 300 millions of years they have been cleaning up the earth for us and i found something very interesting is that there's a recent research paper came out you know what happened to all the dinosaur poop that's what the cockroaches did you know they cleaned it up all if cockroaches were not there the entire planet will be covered with their stuff of fossil stuff <laughs> there so you know alhamdulillah cockroaches are there that's why we have a beautiful clean planet a habitable planet for us to live in you know, next time when you see cockroach instead of screaming you should say jazakumullah khairan you know because of them we have a nice habitable planet to live i found this you know you can look at these sources there is a uh, paper from oxford that talks in detail about all the benefits of uh, cockroach and there is a whole book written by john hopkins university uh, they go in great length what are the, all the incredible benefits of cockroaches there so all these creatures you know uh, allah is telling us that everything on earth is created for us literally everything on earth every single creature every natural process you see no matter how destructive they appear at the beginning they are they are actually their significant benefit for us and earth is like a massive factory and it needs literally billions of workers 
to make it go smoothly and you know, function properly. And the creatures that Allah has put on the earth, they are the nature's workers. You know, we get them for free. We don't realize what benefit they have. And each of them have different, different roles. You know, there is someone who is responsible for recycling. Uh, there is someone who is the CEO, chief excretion officer. <laughs> Their job is to clean up all the poops that animals leave. You know, there are creatures that take care of parasites and some are specialized in dealing with fungus. Uh, not spreading too much and creating lots of infections around on the plants and on the animals. Mm -hmm. So each of them ha have roles there to perform. You know, there are millions of millions of species have been discovered. Every single of them has been found to do something incredible in the nature. And Earth is really good at recycling. And Allah has designed the recycling system on the planet Earth to function at 100% efficiency. For billions of years, recycling has been going out at 100% efficiency. But we are not there yet, you know, our recycling rate, the global average is about 13.5%. So we produce 2 billion tons a year of waste. Out of that, let's say about 1.8 billion gets accumulated. And every creature you see on the nature, you know, they are extremely efficiently designed. They will consume whatever they need from the nature and they will release their stuff, which will then go to the soil and release the nutri nutrients back into the soil, also back into the atmosphere. And even when they die, they will get 100% recycled, no waste left. But we are a totally different creature. You know, we consume all the stuff from the planet and then produce all these trashes that goes to harm the nature, doesn't recycle. And we do give back a little bit to the nature. So, you know, something to think about next time you go to toilet, you know, you are doing a noble job. You're giving back to nature some of what you have taken from it. And I, I was thinking that, you know, okay, there are lots and lots of creatures that are there. Can we function uh, without millions of species? No, what if there are a couple of creatures there? Uh, will we still have a habitable planet? Uh, we can do a thought experiment. Let's say that there are only humans and cockroaches living happily ever after on planet. What would happen in that case? We will make the earth dirty and cockroach will clean it up. So let's see what happens if, if that was the case. So in two generations, there will be you know, six to 10 humans. In second generation, there will be 200 cockroaches. In the third generation, there will be, let's say, 20, 30 human there. In the third generation, there will be 40,000 cockroaches. So within like 15 generation, there will be trillions of cockroaches crawling all over the planet. So we need something that will keep the cockroach population under control. So that's where all the other animals come in. You know, there are lots of other animals that are there. Are you aware of the food chain and the food web in the nature? You know, there are relationship between different animals who consumes what who keeps what under check that's called the food chain you know one consumes another another gets consumed by another and there is also food web of complex relationship you know, one gets consumed by multiple multiple gets consumed by one so that's what is happening here if that wasn't there if food web or food chain wasn't there what would have happened is that all the rotting logs dead leaves you know dead animals they will pile up on the earth and soon the entire earth will be covered with uh, all this dead material there will be stenches everywhere you go so they are being cleaned up by a layer of cre creatures, bacteria, funguses, and all these crickets and other creatures. Now, this layer will have unlimited amount of food. So they will multiply, go, and cover the whole planet. So they are kept in check by another layer of creatures. And they are also kept in check by another layer and eventually the top of the food chain. And interestingly, the top of the food chain is being kept control, in control by the bacteria and funguses you see. You know, they have diseases and their population gets carved. So there is a beautiful cyclic relationship here. And what's amazing is that you know, there are millions of species, dependencies on each other are designed in a perfect way that there will be complete harmony, total balance there in the nature. You know, that's the incredible planning of Allah that there are millions of species. He has calculated perfect dependency on each other, that they keep all each other in check to maintain an earth where the nature is you know, perfectly in balance and harmony and also insuitable for us to live as well. You know, that's the amazing. We, when we take charge of like, a, you know, if you're in a senior management position, we are given a couple of hundred people organized to create. We create so much problem. We could not resolve conflict of interest between different teams. <laughs> you know, so many uh, backbiting going on there. We couldn't make an organization work of a couple of hundred people. Allah did it for billions of creatures in perfect balance. So let's talk about, you know, what's the deadliest animal on earth. And some of these animals, you know, believe it or not, creates a crisis of faith in Muslims and, of course, the 
anti-Muslim group uses these animals, or not just anti-Muslim, even atheists use, show these animals to show that these animals are pure evils. There's no way God exists who would create an animal like this because they seem to be only causing harm. So let's look at the league table. Number one is mosquito. Uh, nearly a million people die each year because of mosquito-borne diseases. So you will find reference to mosquitoes in all these atheist websites. And they're claiming that how can there be a God who created an animal like this that kills millions of people each year? You know? So there must be something going wrong here. Uh, and, and by the way, congratulations, we are the second most deadliest creature on the planet. Imagine half a million each year. It's incredible, isn't it? When I looked at that stat, uh, this is published by WHO. This reminded me of this verse, you know, in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah declared that he is going to put man on earth. The angels immediately raised the issue that man will cause corruption and shed blood. It shows we, we, we have proven the angels correct half a million each year. Incredible statistics. So going back to mosquito, you know, what good mosquito does? It seems to be causing only harm. Now the interesting thing is, you know, there are over 3,500 species of mosquitoes. Uh, only 6% of them actually bite human. And not, not, uh, only the females bite human. The males are good. You know, they hang out with their mates. You know, they take their buddies out for a drink, uh, halal nectar, of course, uh, and you know, eat fruits. They don't do any damage to us. It's only the females that cause the problem. So you know, even in the mosquito population, there is a small fraction that is harmful for us. The majority of them are actually good for us. And what do they do? Let's see, you know, the first job they do is waste disposal. They take care of fungus, algae, and parasites. If mosquitoes were not there, we would be having an explosion of fungus, algae, and parasite growth. There will be epidemics going on all the time. So mosquitoes take care of them. And not only that, they, they eat them and produce nutrients for the plant food source. So they're very efficient. You know, they're keeping the uh, certain harmful creatures in control. And also they're converting those harmful creatures into food source for plants. You know, what an efficient design is there. That's the big one, one big benefit of mosquito. The other big benefit of mosquito is that they protect nature. So mosquitoes are like security guard for nature. Whenever you will have areas where in, in nature there will be a lot of mosquitoes, you will see that larger animals and even us will stay away from that place. So that nature area becomes a, a nature reserve automatically. And it, uh, it facilitates growth of many different species of plants and small creatures there. They're totally undisturbed because of this you know, security guard. I asked an AI to generate a picture that mosquito guarding forest. It generated pretty cool pictures. It is pretty efficient. And most of the pictures you see uh, in my slide, they're all generated by AI, you know, how advanced they have become. Uh, and by the way, you know, I must tell you that it will be a bit tangent, but the, the AI age has come. We need to equip our kids with this AI skill, no matter which profession they go. You know, they can go to medicine, chemistry, physics, civil engineering. If they know how to make, leverage AI, they will become super engineer and super doctor so we need to teach our kids how to make best use of ai the age has already come we need to catch up uh, otherwise we'll be the nation again that always falls behind in science and technology the other benefit of mosquito is that uh, mosquitoes are the food source for frogs and fishes as well so they themselves get consumed by other creatures and contribute to the food web so there, you see there's a lot of benefit of mosquitoes you know something that you think is pure evil Actually, there's a lot of uh, benefit. There's a lot of benefit for us from this creature. Uh, you can go to this. I'll, I'll probably share these slides with you later on. That you can go to these links and read uh, a lot more about what are all the benefits mosquitoes do. It goes on. I, I initially prepared ten over ten slides on this. I realized you will get bored, so I dropped most of them. So many benefits just from mosquitoes. I, I never knew. All right, let's talk about oxygen. Ah, let's breathe in. Oh. The oxygen, and we all know that the plants produce oxygen. They take carbon dioxide off, out from the atmosphere and then they release oxygen. Now, half of all the oxygen that are produced on, on Earth comes from trees or the green plants that you see. So, where does the rest half come from? Anyone know from where the rest half comes from? <laughs> you all, of course, know it. Any guesses from where the rest half comes from? The rest half comes from seas. If you look at a satellite picture of a sea, you see this green powdery stuff and it looks like someone has put green powders on the sea. 
these green powdery stuff are like microscopic creatures. There are trillions of trillions of these small microscopic creatures uh, that live on the top layer of the sea where the sunlight is still there. And th these creatures are called phytoplankton. So they take sunlight and they consume various minerals from the sea and then they use that to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. I think the animation will catch up and it will show you that these phytoplanktons are, are doing photosynthesis just like the uh, plants, regular plants do. They take carbon dioxide in and then they use sunlight to break it down into carbon and oxygen and carbon is what they use and oxygen gets released out and these oxygen go back to the atmosphere. So that's where the remaining half of the oxygen is coming from. And not, not just producing oxygen, they're also taking a lot of carbon dioxide out of the uh, nature as well from the ecosystem. If you think about it, you know, they, they, uh, phytoplankton produce 50% and plants produce 50%. There's incredible redundancy. Land will produce, it is designed that land will produce half of the oxygen and sea will produce the rest of the half oxygen. If land gets corrupted by human being too much, the sea is there to compensate for it. If we cover up the sea too much, land is there to compensate for it. Now, what's an incredible thinking and balance has been there put on the earth, both in land and sea, there will be mechanisms to compensate for the damages that we cause to the ecosystem. And they actually help us a lot. You know, we, nowadays we produce 35 billion tons of carbon dioxide uh, each year. That's a 10 year old statistics. Nowadays it has even gone up 52 billion or something in the latest stat. They are getting uh, absorbed uh, by the plants and the phytoplankton. Half of them get absorbed, the rest half keeps accumulating each year and then we have all this uh, uh, climate change crisis, global warming, all these problems are coming up because there is no one else to consume the remaining half. We are destroying the planet and the planet is trying its best to survive from our damage. And the interesting thing is that, you know, these phytoplankton, they need iron to survive and multiply. And since there are trillions of uh, phytoplankton all over the planet, all the seas have them, there needs to be a mechanism to deliver iron at a global scale. The entire planet needs delivery of iron and iron is very expensive in nature. So where do they get iron from? That's an interesting source. <laughs> Any clue, anyone? Why do phytoplankton get iron from? You know, this smallest creature on sea gets its food delivered by the largest creature ever to exist, the blue whales. These blue whales deliver phytoplankton with iron. And I have a nice video. I, I think you can all hear the, uh, the narration. I'll, I'll probably Darwin's, play this. These plumes are rich in iron and nitrogen, nutrients which are often very... So that's a whale poop, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. And these nutrients fertilize plant plankton that lives in the only place where plants can survive here because plant plankton not only feeds the animals of the sea, it also absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When eventually it sinks to the ocean floor, it takes this carbon out of circulation down to a place where it remains. The more whales there are, the more plankton there is. The more plankton there is, the more carbon is drawn out of the air. You know, these magnificent creatures, there are about 15 to 20,000 of them swimming all around the planet, all the six or seven oceans we have. Uh, and they are distributing iron to the sea water and that's what is getting consumed by the phytoplankton to you know thrive if whales were not there we would be having an ecological collapse because these whales are indirectly responsible for maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the nature without these whales we would not have a habitable planet and, and it's, it's amazing that allah has created this gigantic creature that we will not easily damage, you know, if they were smaller, we would have eaten and finished them all off by now. You know, Alhamdulillah that they are so big that they are not so easy to catch and damage. All right, so the last topic I'll touch on is earthquakes. This is a hard topic and you know, it's very hard to show what's the benefit of earthquake. And especially when you see tragic events like Turkey and the Syria border where there was an earthquake, many people got into a crisis of faith. They couldn't believe why would Allah do this, especially on that particular area where there are Syrian refugees. Now, by the way, the earthquake doesn't only happen in that. The earthquake happens all over the planet. Even non-Muslim countries get severe earthquakes and they have a lot of suffering. It's just that we don't see them in the kind of social media we consume. We only see Muslim suffering, but it happens all over the planet. 
So what good is there in earthquake? That seems to be the only thing that commits only destruction, no benefit for us. But there is very interesting benefit from earthquakes as well. Firstly, earthquake uh, is the byproduct of very important changes happening in the planet. So I'll have a couple of animations to show you what kind of changes happen in the planet uh, due to which you know there is earthquake happen. So firstly, a little bit of you know geography lesson. Uh, I'm sure you all know you have all studied in the school that Earth has multiple layers. Inside the Earth, at the center, you have the iron core. Then around that, you have molten layers of rocks, and then you have the very thin crust where we live. It's a very very thin crust where we all live. Now that crust, the, the, the outer shell is not a solid piece like an eggshell, it's cracked into multiple pieces. And each of these pieces you see are they are called tectonic plates. Now these plates are not fixed interestingly, they are all moving. And they are moving because of what's going on underneath them, there is the molten rock that's flowing. And because of that flow, the tectonic plates that are on the outer layer of the earth, they also are moving. Sometimes they are going underneath each other. You know, here you can see ocean plates going underneath the continental plates, sometimes continental plates <coughs> squeezing each other. So what happens is when, when pressure builds up, a plate is going another plate, pressure is building up and then there is a sudden release of one of the plate and that's when we have earthquakes. So you see a plate gets released, you have earthquake and then you have tsunami causing the destruction. Similarly, pressure building up and then there is a sudden release. And that's what causes the earthquake. So earthquakes are byproduct of tectonic plate movement. Why tectonic plate? You know? And why are they moving? What's the importance of tectonic plates to be there and also uh, they're, they're moving there? Initially, the earth was just one landmass. Because of the tectonic plate movement, this, that one landmass spread into six continents. Six continents? Seven continents? Six continents, I think. And, and because of that, they spread, we have so many diverse habitats. We have Amazon forest there, we have Sahara desert there. So many countries are there who have vast amount of flat land for agriculture, then there are mountains. We need all of that. We need all of that to create a nature where complex life like human can come and survive and grow. Without this tectonic plate movement, the earth wouldn't have the uh, necessary variety and necessary uh, stuff there on the planet for complex life forms to come. There will be some small simple life forms there but not complex forms like uh, human or even, even the mammals wouldn't be there as well. So tectonic plate is, is the requirement for complex life form creation. And you, you will see that when scientists are looking for other planets, other habitable planets on the universe, they have now set up a criteria that look for tectonic plate movement. If it is not there, no point looking at that planet. There's no way complex life will exist in that planet. Because these tectonic plate movements also perform another very important role is that they continuously replenish mineral that is inside the planet. They get delivered to the outer layer of the planet where all the plants and animals consume. And it, uh, it happens via volcanic explosion. You know, volcano releases a lot of mineral and then also through the seabed expansion. You know, all, underneath all the seas, the beds are spreading and minerals from beneath the earth is coming out and, and getting mixed with the sea water and that delivers all the nutrients the, the sea creatures need. So that's another big benefit of tectonic plate is that the surface of the planet, all the creatures are consuming all the minerals and nutrients, there needs to be a continuous supply to replenish that and that's what the tectonic plate movements do, they are replenishing the minerals from beneath the earth to the outer layer of the earth. And I know that's why they have uh, the scientists have set up this criteria that if there is a tectonic plate movement, uh, simple life forms would have finished all the nutrients. There's no point in looking for complex lives there. Uh, earthquake also you know, brings a lot of benefit is that because of earthquake, we have gold, silver and copper available at the top layer or the upper layer of the earth. And we need gold, silver and copper, you know, all the electricity that's flowing here, that's because of the copper wires. Uh, the devices we have, you know, the mobile phones you have, they have a microchip and microchip has gold in it. Without gold, we would not be able to build microchips. So earthquake delivered us all these precious minerals that we were able to use to become a technologically advanced civilization. And you were able to, you know, WhatsApp and Telegram and come here to learn about earthquake. You know, earthquake facilitated all of you to be, to come here. So you see even 
destructive things like earthquakes bring a lot of benefit. Without earthquakes, we would not be here today. So yeah, you see that you know everything on the earth is created for us. Everything you look at it, no matter how destructive they uh, they appear to be, even tsunamis, you know, they are they also do a, a very important function on the planet as well. They they reform landscapes on the seabed and also the coastal areas. So tsunamis also have a lot of benefit. I think that was the, this uh, about this verse. Uh, in the next part, we plan to do this as a monthly series. In next part, we will talk about this particular verse we all know that here Allah is telling us that he has created humans in the best form we'll discuss that not just our brain our entire body especially our hands and various internal organs have been very specifically designed to make us the best creature uh, on this planet and our hand if you if you look at it this is the most precise design of a hand that we have in the animal kingdom we can do things that no other animals can do you know we can uh, whatsapp using our hand that no other animal can do uh, and this hand allows us to be to become a technologically advanced creature on this planet no other animal even if you put human brain inside them they will not be able to become the technologically advanced as we are we need this hand to become technology advanced. and this hand has allowed us to do highly intelligent functions like this the last one is very interesting <laughs> so we will talk about this intelligent creature in our next episode inshallah <laughs> all right uh, all of you here anyone missing in this list no one missing all right let's start the first question uh, all right let's see what's the correct answer the correct answer is 200 plus why does a religious book have more than 200 plus verses talking about creation nature science you know something to think about it uh, let's reflect on that why did allah have 200 reminders more than 200 reminders for us that we think about his creation because if we don't do that we will have an imbalanced understanding of religion you need to understand the the power the majesty the creativity you know the design and planning of your lord that you are worshiping if you all you get is you know dry islamic literature fake and hadith you know do this don't do that don't eat that don't look at that don't say that don't listen to that and here's how all the rituals you have to do five times a day 365 days a year it becomes dry you know you need inspiration and that's what these verses are about to inspire you about allah you know so you have that fire burning inside you you know the lord that you are worshiping you are inspired to do that so it's very important that when we teach our kids about islam you know do balance it out with all these 200 verses out there otherwise they, they need that intrinsic motivation inside them abu yahya very good number one you are the fastest finger here man Someone answered oxygen. <laughs> you're, you're partially right. At night, plants consume oxygen, but during the day, I mean, it's not a wrong answer. We probably should mark that as also a valid answer. Uh, but yeah, during the day, they, they consume carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. At night, they consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. And there lies a big mystery. At night, if all the trillions of plant, plants are consuming oxygen and producing carbon dioxide, there should be a serious crisis of oxygen in the na nature but that doesn't happen why not you know figure out that's a very interesting thing to find out so what they do is they create holes into the soil and that allows nitrogen oxygen to go inside the soil and that's what the plants need and also the soil fertility uh, the, to maintain the soil fertility, we need all these atmospheric gases to go inside the soil. But the water irrigation is also not bad because of the, through those holes, rainwater also goes inside. So not bad, you know, water irrigation is also okay. <laughs> 16 are there, okay. Ladybug, who thought about it? Huh? Ladybugs are the nature's pest controller. <laughs> Irina now has bitten Abu Yahya. Very good, Irina. Mm. 
Zafir, you are the number one. <laughs> Decompose organic matter. Do they produce oxygen? Have you heard any news about funguses producing oxygen nowadays? They discovered a worldwide web of a very interesting creature underneath the soil. The right answer is underground fungus network. So this is called wood wide web. Uh, you, you will find if you if you Google wood wide web, you will find a very interesting BBC documentary. Scientists discovered that underneath the soil especially in forest, there is a huge fungus network and that fungus network is the internet for trees. They use that fungus network to share resources with each other, communicate with each other. The chemical superhighway, it's also their marketplace. They share nutrients with each other through that fungus network. It's incredible. It is, I would highly recommend watching that documentary. It's one of those you know, incredible wow moment that what has been designed on this planet. And you look at our creation of internet and you see that fungus network is almost identical design going on there. Ah, timed out. <laughs> habitat for mosquitoes. Is that a benefit for, yeah, not bad, why not? You know, mosquitoes eventually have benefits. So the, the correct answer is there, the uh, water filter, natural water filter. <laughs> but also, that, I mean, that's partially true. They are habitat for mosquitoes and mosquitoes in, eventually benefit us and harm us so it's a controversial topic but the correct answer is elephant so when elephants walk they pull down push down trees create paths and as they push trees out they create empty space for grasses and other plants to grow Sharks, yeah, sharks, sharks is the right answer. Yeah, you're kind of whales, whales are popular today, but no, unfortunately, whales don't do it. Uh, whales don't eat much of other ma marine animals. Fox, do fox eat rodents? Yeah, I think they do. Fox do eat rodents. Yeah, you're right. Sea turtle, yeah, that's good. Many of you know that answer. The right answer is a whale, fin, and flippers. Now, this brings an interesting point here. You know, all these creatures have been put on the planet, not just to take care of the planet for us, but they are there to teach us engineering. You know, so many creatures have inspired so many engineering design and innovation. The trains, the, the bullet trains, front side design has come from a particular bird. So many things, you know, you look at this turbine design that has come from the whale fin and flippers design. Lots of animals are there that has inspired advanced engineering design for us. You know, there, this is a hard one, I know. Bees, yeah, you're right. You know, bees taught us advanced robotics and AI algorithms. Who knew? Yeah. All right, there we go. Number one is Amina. Amina, please come. Take your prize, <laughs> mashallah. No, take you. Very good. And Abu Yahya. Uh, yeah, please make dua for us that this becomes a successful event. Uh, we want to do a couple of these events you know the goal is to inspire our kids uh, about you know allah's incredible design and planning on this inspiration and hopefully you know uh, this will go into addressing many of the modern day challenges that come against islam as they are growing up they go to internet and they google things they get a lot of anti-islamic results coming up on google so we want to equip them with knowledge so they can defend those intellectual claims <laughs>